Hello Skull Squad. So, today's video is about initial trap placement with the hag on Grave of Glenvale. So, what do I mean by initial trap placement? So, these are the traps that you set up at the start of the game to construct your initial web or your initial perimeter. Are these traps going to be the only traps you ever place? No! Initial! So start! Based on what the survivors do, if you notice that some traps are kind of useless, or if some traps you know, they get a lot of harassment, but no hits, you, you start to like mess up and change your web so that you kind of keep the survivors on their toes. Something to keep in mind before we start though, is that Grave of Glenville has basically three sections to it. The side of the map that has three close houses, the road in the middle, and then the side of the map that has the salon, or the saloon, I guess you could, you're supposed to say. Um, I prefer the saloon side. So this initial trap placement is for the saloon side. I feel like the saloon side is better because there's a lot more vertical areas and more space. And because of that, I feel like it's easier to lock down. So we're about to watch me a game that I played and recorded. I'm not playing it live, but I'll be here to explain what happened during the game. So here we go. Ha! And my, my signature red, red dress with snake hand that I love to use. So when I start, I realize I'm on the wrong side. I'm facing the wrong direction. So I turn around, come here, and here we place trap one. So why is this trap good? This trap protects anybody who's like upstairs already and jumping down to the vault, they're gonna hit this trap and stagger. It protects you from people who are going in the front door and to a lesser extent protects you from people who are running down the stairs in the saloon to try to head out the door. So three points with this one trap. Trap two, we go up the stairs, turn the corner and place it here. So why do I turn the corner and place it? The idea is that when you activate Hag's Trap, if you're not directly looking at it, you, your camera is forced forced to face it, right? So by putting it here, anybody going up the stairs has their camera swung, and they get disoriented, which makes it easier for us to hit them. So this trap also does three things, pe uh, protecting us from people who are going up the stairs, uh, who are coming into the saloon from the window, or coming into the saloon from the generator that's already up here, uh, on the outside. So that's trap two. Trap three, we go down these stairs and we put it right here because this trap is really good for people who are at the dock area outside, not here in the saloon, but they're trying to run away from you into the saloon. And this trap gets them quite often. So this is trap number three. Um, I was about to go place the trap number four until I saw the survivors sneaking around. So I decided to put some pressure on them instead. That seemed a little bit better at this point but they were going way too far, so we went back here to the dock to place trap number four. So why is this trap good? Uh, that generator that's on the dock up there, that's always there, um, there's there's quite a few ways to get, get away from it, get out of it if you're up there, but the two main ones are going to this far corner directly above us and then dropping down. So we place this trap to do it. Once we place this trap number four, we place that trap number five here so remember how I said there's two drops? The other drop is a vault area that is to the other side of that first wall. So I put this trap here to hit somebody going down the vault, but we're also putting it here to protect that pallet that we just passed by. So that's five traps. When you get to the trap number six, it's more about uh, protecting the generators. Well, the other two generators that are over here, because the two generators over here, they kind of spawn like semi-randomly they can sort of sort of change locations. So trap number six is a perimeter trap just to protect this this uh, generator over here. But I saw Steve around the corner, so I decided to go give him a smack before I placed trap number six. Make, yeah, make sure you go back and actually place your traps if you see somebody, but here's play trap number six. Luckily I didn't forget because, you know, you never know, I might forget sometimes. Okay. Trap number seven is right here to, per to be the last perimeter trap. This is the fourth gen on our side. We want to make sure we're protecting it. The good thing about this trap is that it also protects us from people who are trying to loop and hug this corner really tight or who are coming from the corner on the other side of the building to get to this generator. So with all those in place, <laughs> we had more pressure because someone immediately activated one of our traps. So we replaced it. Never forget to replace your traps because replacing your traps as hag especially ones that you know are working, is very important to her success. 
So I'm not gonna even gonna kick it because I want to continue to set up my web. But before I can go to my my uh, eighth trap or my seventh trap at this point, no, it's my eighth. Uh, someone activated this trap. That's why the number went down. My eighth, before I go to my eighth trap, which is gonna be in the shack, we have more pressure on her, so we give her a slap and then replace this trap. Trap number eight is usually in the shack because that's a very it's a very traveled location. So I tend to want to put a trap here. But before I could do it, you know, we see UA over here <laughs> giving us more pressure. So we wait for her to drop the pallet, break it, set up our eighth trap, and then keep moving. Now, we have two traps left. What do I do with these traps? So usually what I do is, once I have my initial web here, I circle around the front next to that gen you see on the screen there, and go back to Saloon, putting the traps in places in front of... Uh, pallets on the way there. Most most famously, the pallet that, for the most part, always spawns directly in front of the saloon. So we put a trap there. Um, what you could also do is save these two traps for when you get a hook in the future, or if you've already hooked somebody by the time it took you to set up your initial traps. Alright, so we apply our last pressure here. Go ahead and replace your trap. Don't, don't forget to play, replace your traps. If, if you get one thing from this video, please don't forget to replace your traps. We make a dangerous play here by uh, walking through that pallet. I shouldn't have done that. I should have went around to be safe. But we got the hook anyway, and we were able to come back here immediately to pressure. Um, I didn't go chase this girl immediately because I wanted to show in this video initial trap placements more. So I felt like I'll just re reset my traps and keep going. Luckily, when we do chase her, there happens to be two people here. We get a free slap, and then we jump down to go get this girl. Um, <laughs> I prioritized the trap that got activated rather than hitting her, which maybe I should have hit her instead, because as you saw, I missed the Steve. What I do here is, I, when I replace my trap for Steve, I push it a little bit further, so that hopefully, next time this trap is activated, I don't hit that rock. You know, please not hitting a rock, thank you. Um, our traps keep activating. <laughs> well, trap activates again, so we reset up our trap, and then we go back on the move. So... We, we heard the girl up here, so we, we want to go back to go get her. Luckily, she was healing, which wasted her time, and was able to give us a hit on the land. Uh, it's actually about to happen again here. We don't set up the trap because she is so close, uh, and I know that she's going to drop down, and when she drops down, we get the second hit. Remember that when survivors drop down, they stagger, so they go slower. So if you're jumping, if you guys jump down nearly the same time, you're pretty much guaranteed a hit, unless they have balance landing. Don't, please don't come for me if you're trying to get a hit and they speed off because they have balance landing. That's not what I'm talking about. So what do we do? We go ahead and get our hook, and then we go back to tend to our traps. You're going to notice in this video that I don't really put traps at the hook often this time. That's not a bad play. Like Usually you want to do that. That's a good thing to do to protect your traps. It's just because we were so uh, focused on trap placement in this video. That I decided not to do that. I just decided to keep up my initial web as often as I could. Right. So, once we get the hit there, I kind of want to check on my web and keep patrolling. Patrolling all, all inside my web, so that, uh, just so that I'm in range to teleport. Um, we do want to pick up this girl, though. <laughs> Definitely want to pick up this girl and put her on the hook. Yeah, there you go. Okay, but, as you see really closely, as I go to make sure my web is okay and patrol a little bit, uh, the UA is actually going to give herself up on hook, surprisingly. So, there you go. The trap that we already had here that got a few hits by the generator. And then you're going to notice at any moment now that UA decides to give up. So, at this point, I'm feeling kind of safe. Uh, none of my generators are being currently worked on, so I decide to venture out to look for the others, on the other generators. Um, I want, at this point I decide to put up all my traps. I'm like, no one's on a hook, I don't need to have any traps on my hand. It's better to have all your traps out, so it's more likely that you can use your power. Um, this, this team was really good. I think this was like the only mistake they made, they like body blocked each other. So we, because they body blocked each other, we got that free hit on Steve. Um, we look at him through the window, he starts heading outside, so we turn the corner and get the hit on him. I think the only reason we got this hit on Steve was he must not have been looking at us when he bolted the window. Otherwise, he would have known that we turned this way. 
Uh, see, as I said, I'm not placing traps at the hooks, but that's not a bad strategy. Definitely a good thing to do to protect the hooks. What I opt to do instead is to check on my generators. I want to make sure that none of the generators in my web are being worked on. So once I go ahead and kick this, we actually are going to take the, take the long way around just to make sure my other generators are still OK, and then go check on the others. So again here, I felt safe. Nothing was being worked on. So I decided to go out into the distance. And then that gem pops, so we know they're over there. What I do is I go around the building, because if they start running, I want them to run towards my web rather than away from it. Since they didn't run and they tried to commit to this heal, I was actually able to get the free hit on Kate. Um, I suppose they were almost done healing. If they were, that would have them, given them an additional hit and a speed boost to get away. Luckily, I got there just in time to uh, deny that to them. We come here to check on the unhook, and we barely catch that person sneaking around the corner. Because we do see them, we do get the hit. And then I decide to chase her, because I'm feeling confident with two people already dead that chasing her won't be too bad of an idea. Um, we see her here, so we cut her off through here. I think she, she either wasn't looking and didn't see, or, or she could have went straight, or she had life, and she was banking on that life to get her past me. Uh, luckily, we got there just in time for this to work. Now, with this person hooked, I decided to go back and check on my web. Uh, I could have very well put a trap there, but as I was saying, I wasn't really focused on uh, hook traps this game. So we go out to check on Steve. Uh, she DCs, which opens the hatch, just as we're patrolling the area right by the hatch, which gets us the free clothes. The door happens to be right in our face, so we put this trap here. Oh, and remember this trap for later. Because right as we say this, a trap gets activated, which gives us a hit on Steve in the shack. I don't reset it, because it's near the end. He's literally the last person. Oh, listen to this. Did you hear that? Did you hear? He went up the stairs, and he dropped. Because we heard him drop, we didn't go up the stairs, because that would waste time. We went around to go get him. And that trap we set up right in the beginning over there. Oh, there you go. We got the hit. I mean, I guess we didn't really need that trap, because he wouldn't have made it. He wouldn't have been able to open the door anyway. But it was still nice to get that hit on him, you know? It was so nice that the, the trap worked. That's what I'm trying to say. The trap worked, we got a hit, phenomenal. So, hey! That's that's basically how your game would, should go, as long as you're paying attention to your initial traps. And remembering to reset your traps. Please, please again, if you get anything from this video, don't forget to reset your traps. Yes. So, that's it for this video. Um, if you want to become part of the Skull Squad, just click on that subscribe button and check out the link below to join our Discord and talk to other members. And remember, never forget to hold on to hope, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.